regression analysis is a statistical technique that is used to study relationships between variables. Multiple linear regression is a, again a statistical technique where you study the effect of one or more independent variables on one dependent variable. So in a regression you will have one dependent variable and one or more independent variables. So regression models are of two types. A simple regression which can be further categorized into linear and nonlinear, and multiple regression, where again you can be classified, which can be classified into linear and nonlinear. A simple regression is one where there is one explanatory or independent variable x. A multiple regression is one where there is where there are two or more explanatory variables or independent variables in the regression. Now. What we do in regression analysis is we try to uh, study a relationship which exists in a population based on a representative sample which is drawn from that population and the estimates of the regression are made and the estimates of the regression coefficients are made from the sample. So the sample should be as representative as possible and it should be unbiased. Now in this presentation, I am going to discuss how multiple linear regression models are estimated by the method of ordinary least squares, the assumptions of fitting a regression line by the method of ordinary least squares, the actual estimator of the least square estimator, the statistical properties of the OLS estimator, finite sample properties and the asymptotic properties. So, I'm going to discuss uh, multiple linear regression and introduce you to the, the methodology involved in estimating the regression through the method of ordinary least squares. A multiple linear regression is a statistical technique which studies the relationship between one dependent variable, which is also called the regressant, and one or more independent variables called the regressors or the variables. So if you are going to study, if you are going to study output of rice, then the output of rice would be the dependent variable. The independent variables would be land area, the amount of labor that you use, the amount of fertilizer that you have used, and the amount of capital that you have employed in the production process of rice. A regression model that contains more than one regressing, regressor variable is called a multiple regression model. The simple regression model is a special case of a multiple regression model. For example, sup supposing the production of a product Y depends on the quantity of labor, the amount of raw material used, the amount of capital used and the power used, then the, 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 the regression can be written as Y is equal to A plus B1 X1 plus B2 X2 plus B3 X3 plus B4 X4 plus E which is a random error. Now, how is a regression, how is this regression equation estimated using the method of ordinary least squares? So, the principle, the principle underlying the estimation of a regression by the method of ordinary least squares is minimizing the sums of squares of the errors. So you have a least square function which we try to minimize, you know, and the, and it is minimized by subtracting the actual y from the estimated y and squared up, and then get the coefficients in such a way, get these coefficients in such a way that the result is the minimum. So the method of ordinary least squares consists of first constructing the normal equations. Now the normal equations are derived from the regression equation as follows. If this is the regression equation, if this is the regression equation, you have one, two, three, four independent variables, you will have four normal equations. The first normal equation is obtained by merely summing up 
applying a summation to all the terms in this equation. So the equation now becomes summation y is equal to summation a plus b1 summation x1 plus b2 summation x2 plus b3 summation x3 plus b4 summation x4. That becomes the first normal equation b1 summation x1 plus b2 summation x2 plus b3 summation x so on to xk and then the, on the right hand side you have the summation y in our case it is on the left hand side the second normal equation is obtained by multiplying the first normal equation by one independent variable at a time now the first no second normal equation would become summation y x1 plus a summation x1 plus b1 summation x1 squared plus b2 summation x2 x1 plus b3 summation x3 x1 plus b4 summation x4 x1 plus et. So that's what happens. So you multiply it with the first variable. So it becomes b0 x1 plus b1 x1 squared plus b2 x1 x2 x1 xk and x1 y. Then all subsequent equations are obtained by multiplying the first normal equation by 1x at a time. So to get the third normal equation, you multiply the first normal equation now by x2. So the third normal equation would become summation y x2 plus a summation x2 plus b1 summation x1 x2 plus b2 summation x2 squared plus b3 summation x3 x2 x2 plus b4 summation x4 x2 so on you go to the last equation the last x and the last term and the last equation would be b0 summation x1 x k in our case x1 x4 plus b2 summation sorry yeah, b2 x1 x4 plus b2 summation x x x2 x4 plus the last term will be b4 summation x4 squared and on the right hand side you'll get summation x4 y so this way the normal equations are derived now from this normal equations we subtract the variables from the constants so the constants are b0 b1 b2 b k in our case b4 and on the right hand side you have summation y summation x1 y so you can be convert them into a matrix so now you'll have a matrix of all the known values so you'll have n summation x1 summation x2 plus summation x3 so you have it here so you've extracted you can you you let you you will uh, all the left hand side values will take a value y this will be the y and this is it so strictly speaking when you're estimating a regression by the method of now we're coming to the estimation part of the regression equation this is the data so here you have the dependent variable here you have the independent variables x1 x2 x3 in our case x4 but when you construct the x matrix which is nothing but your independent matrix of independent variables the first column should be a column of ones now this has to be introduced when you're doing it manually when you're using a computer this this value is supplied by the computer and you do not have to worry about it so now to estimate a regression by the method of ordinary least squares we first arrange the data we have the dependent variable then we have all the independent variables arranged in columns and rows, one column for each variable. And then we introduce a column of ones. The primary purpose of introducing the column of ones is to capture the intercept. Then you have the, un un the, the, the unknowns, which is B0, B1, B2, B3, in our case B4. And then you have a column of error terms. Now I'll construct the same thing with a hypothetical set of data. I'll construct the same thing with a hypothetical set of data which I will, will create in Excel. 
which I'll create in Excel. Now this is an Excel sheet. So I'll create an Excel sheet. We'll define the variables y, x1, x2, x3, and x4. We'll have four independent variables. Then as I told you, you should have a column of ones, so which I'll call as C. And then I will generate the data. Now since it's uh, you know, looking around for data uh, may be a little difficult. So let us generate our own data using the command. We'll generate random data just to show you how the how the how it works, how the calculation works. So I'll use a rand between. I'll use a rand between command, and I'll give some range from 23 to 240 to 25. I'm going to generate data some numbers sorry it's very good right? it's rand between so the first value that the computer has applied is 81 i will draw this to 21 so that i have 20 data points so these are random numbers so that i have a number to work with now this is going to this there is this has to be a constant so here i will introduce one you may notice these random numbers are changing so these random numbers are changing. So we are having a, we will come to that later. I'll create another variable. I'll create another variable. Here I'll put a different range. I'll say from uh, minus 112 till 241. So I have created another variable which I drag down and I get another range of value values and I create another variable which ranges may be from 45 to Spelling mistake. So now we've got another a variable. And a last variable which is equal to Now we've set up four sets of variables, and since these variables have a because they, have, they are all it been a formula called rand between these numbers keep changing uh, with every click with every click of the with the mouse. So what you do is you remove the formula. First you remove the formula by copying the entire range, and then you paste special, and you select values. So you may notice right now, you can see that the formula is still there. So once I do the space special, the formulas will vanish. And now you have a data set, which has got one dependent variable, 
four independent variables and one column of constants. So I will save this for later use. regression over this and I will save it on the desktop. I will replace it. Okay. Now the data is set. So I've got a data to work with. So in a, in, 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 in principle what I've done is I created this dependent variable with 20 rows. I've created the independent variables with the independent four independent variables and one column of constants attached to each uh, variable is a constant so the b0 is the constant b1 is the coefficient of the x1 b2 is a coefficient of x2 and b4 is a coefficient of x1 then we have a column of errors which is nothing but the actual minus the estimated so we generate this after the estimates have been made the regression has been estimated so now now in this uh, equation we have this we have information on this and what we want to estimate is this Okay, so this being the equation, this can be estimated simply as y divided by x. So b is equal to y divided by x. So assuming this is not there, assuming error is not there, y is equal to x divided x into b. So if I want to get beta, it will be, in other words, it will be y divided by capital X. But since this is a matrix, we write it as y into x transpose, okay, to get the value of b. So this is essentially how it's done. This is essentially how it's done. So b is equal to x is the data set, x is the data, x and it's transpose, it becomes x transpose, x transpose, x inverse, x transpose. So let me show you how this is done. Okay. Now let me just name those variables. Okay, this is my y, this is my x, And I will construct a variable called x transpose. Yeah. So to get x transpose, just select the data in Excel, copy, paste it over here, and go to paste, paste special, transpose. So this is my x transpose matrix. So the first thing that I should do is I should get this x transpose x. I'll create this new matrix. So I'll write it here as x transpose x. Okay, I'll put the enclose it in brackets. Now let us look at the dimension of this matrix. Now, x is a 5 rows, 20 column matrix. So it's a 5 into 20 matrix. And I'm going to, and I'm going to multiply this. I'm going to multiply this with, a, with x, which is 20 into 5. which is a 20 into 5 matrix. So they are compatible. That means the columns of the first matrix should be equal to the number of rows in the matrix. The resultant matrix will become a 5 by 5 matrix. So mark off that area. Mark off that area. give it a color and then keep it selected and then type the word MMULT which is for matrix multiplication. So first I take X transpose and 
multiplied by x, which is nothing but a data, including the intercept. Right? Close the bracket and press Control Shift Enter because it is a matrix. Now you've got the x transpose x. You got this part. Now let us do this x transpose y. I will call, I will call it x transpose y here. x transpose y in the square bracket. And then let us see the dimensions. Put in the square bracket. So x transpose we know is a 5. 5 into 20 matrix and this should be multiplied with a 20 we have to multiply by y y is this so it's a 20 it's a 20 you can see 20 by one column so this is a 20 into So the risk so this is compatible. So the resultant matrix will have five rows and one column. I mark that five rows, one column. Keep it selected. Probably give it another color. Okay, and then as when it's selected, you say equal to M M U L T matrix multiply. Then you multiply X transpose, which is here, comma, and multiply it with which is here. Close the bracket. Control shift. Enter. So you get x transpose y. Now we come back here and we see we've got part of this and we've got process. Only thing this has to be converted, this has to be, you have to take an inverse of this. We have to take an inverse of this. So I will k I N V of X transpose X yeah. inverse of X transpose X and so it'll have the same dimension as that. Right? And I just get it there. Just type in the command equal to M I N V E R S E. Open the bracket. Select this. Close the bracket and press control shift enter. Now you've got the x transpose x inverse, which I'll probably give another color. No, I was sorry. I'm sorry. What is the account number you have there? I'm sorry. Thank you for finding it out. What? One one? Double one? No, the one 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 seven eight. Sorry, sorry. No, thank you. Thank you.
So now we go back to, go back to this formula. Now we've implemented this, we've implemented, now we just have to multiply the two and we'll get the regression coefficients. So the resultant would be inverse x transpose x x transpose x into x transpose y. So to get the size So we are multiplying uh, x transpose inverse, x transpose x inverse is a 5 into 5, sorry, is a 5 into 5 matrix multiplied by 5 into 5 matrix multiplied by a 5 into 1 matrix. So the resultant matrix will be a 5 into 1. So I'll mark off that differently, which I'll then call beta. Which I'll then call the beta. So the resultant is a 5 into 1, which I will put another color for. Okay. And then I get it by multiplying equal to mm. U L T X transpose X inverse multiplied by X transpose Y. Close the bracket and don't forget to press Control Shift Enter and not Control Shift. So now we've got the values. We call this B0 because that's how it's been referred to. We'll call this B1 and we'll call this B2. We call this B3 and we'll call this B4. Okay, so the coefficients are have been estimated. So this is how regression coefficients are estimated by the method of ordinary least squares. Now let us try estimating this using the regression option in Excel. So to estimate the regression in Excel, first we go to data, we go to data analysis, then we select regression, say OK, and then it asks you input the Y variable range in case, in our case, Y variable is this. And then it asks us input the x range and the x ranges so we don't include the c the c is uh, you know in, imputed by default by the computer we specify the two and then we can specify an output range which is, is visible we can put an output range somewhere here so that we get the regression here and then we say okay Please forgot to select labels because the first row was labels and we say OK and the regression estimates are here. So if you can recall, you can, you can see 159 is the same 159 that we've got here. The next is minus 0 0.07 that also we've got here. Then 0.98 that also we've got here and then 0.38 is estimated here and 6.05 which is estimated. So all the regression coefficients have been estimated. The procedure that we've used is the ordinary least squares, just to show you how it works. And this gives you the, yeah. Now from this, it's very interesting. From this, you can see very interesting. Now if to get the covariance of the estimates, to get the covariance of the estimates, okay, to get the covariance of the estimates, B is derived from this directly. Can you see? 
it's x transpose x inverse inverse that is the same term multiplied by sigma uh, sigma squared so, so you what you get is you're getting the this matrix when you take the inverse you're getting this matrix multiplied by sigma squared Now this also can be, can be we can derive it from this matrix. Okay. Now we we can we, we we know that this this matrix because it's inverse is the is the uh, is the covariance of B multiplied by sigma. So it is this can also double up. This can also double up as sigma. Do an insert. Sigma. Sigma. Squared. Two. So this is what we get. This can also be seen as that. Sorry. Sigma into variance. So this this term is also can also be said this is equivalent to uh, sigma squared into variance of beta. Now where we need the variance of beta is to get these derive the standard error. So the standard errors of the beta are the variance of the betas uh, under root. If you take the square root of the variance of the betas, you get a standard error. And to get the variance of b, I need to now factor out the sigma squared. Now where do I get the sigma squared from? So I get the sigma squared from the ANOVA table and this is sigma squared. This is sigma squared. This term is sigma, sigma squared. Now let me show you how this is derived from manually. I'm now going to develop, I'm now going to generate the ANOVA. I'm now going to generate the ANOVA. So ANOVA has something called a source of variation then it has what is called as the degrees of freedom then you have something called the sums of squares and you have the mean sums of squares So the first source of the error is due to regression. The second source is to error. Hello, hello.
you have the error and then you have the token. First, we take the degrees of freedom. Now, the error, regression degrees of freedom is the number of parameters. Now, we have five parameters here. That is k. So, it's number of parameters minus 1. So, it becomes 5 minus 1. Error degrees of freedom is number of observations, which is 20, minus number of parameters, which is 5. Total degrees of freedom is n minus 1. Now coming to the sums of squares. Now sums of squares is calculated, regression sums of squares is calculated as y hat minus y bar, the whole square. Summation y hat minus y bar, the whole square. Now let me construct the y hat values over here. So we have the data here. Now y hat are the estimated y's. So I'll just create two or three columns over here. Okay. So first I'm going to calculate the estimated values. Y hat. Okay. So y hat is calculated by multiplying. Okay. Yep. By calculating the data x, which is 20 observations by 5 20 observations, 5 columns should be multiplied with the coefficient matrix which is 5 rows 5 rows and 1 column multiplied by 5 rows into 1 column we'll check for their compatibility they are compatible as a column so the first matrix is equal to the rows of second matrix so the resultant matrix will be 20 rows and one column so i'll mark off the 20 rows and one column and do a matrix multiplication using the mmult command so here i have to take the full data that is here without the titles of course that multiplied by the coefficient matrix. I close the bracket and I should press Control Shift Enter and the estimated values would have populated. Now I will calculate the error. Error. Now error is defined as the actual y minus the estimated y which is 32.2 so the actual y is 32.3 greater than the estimated y in the second case the estimated y is 8.14 greater <coughs> than the actual so you get the error term now that I have got the estimated value, I can, I can now calculate the regression sums of squares. The regression sums of squares, which I'll write as, which I'll write as, yes. So regression sums of squares, as I told you, is, open a bracket, y hat minus y bar. So instead of writing y bar, I will take an average of the y. So this has to be fixed because 
this. But therefore, I fix it so that it doesn't shift as I make the calculation. So regression sums of squares is G3 minus the average of A3 to A21. Okay. I double click. I've got the regression sums of squares. Yeah. I've got the regression sums of squares. I'd insert one black column here. And now I'll calculate the error sums of squares. ESS for short. Error sums of squares. The error sums of squares is equal to actual y minus estimated y the whole squared. Uh, I've got the error sums of squares. Now the error sums of squares in the ANOVA table is a total. It's a total. So regression sums of squares would be the sum of that column equal to sum because there's a summation sign is equal to sum I must be a mistake. So it's a real calculation mistake. It's a formula mistake. It should have been G minus average the whole square. So I've got the regression sums of squares, which I've totaled it here. Now I'll take the error sums of squares and I'll say equal to sum. Error sums of squares. It's the sum total of this column of y minus y hat the whole square. So I've got the error sums of squares and total sums of squares is calculated as we don't exactly need that here. We don't make it like in India. What we need is the mean sums of squares. The mean sums of squares due to regression is calculated by dividing the sums of squares due to regression by the degrees of freedom due to regression. The resultant value is 3.4. To get the error sums of squares, it is sums of squares due to error divided by degrees of freedom and you've got the degree error, error sums. And from this we calculate the F statistic. From this we calculate the F statistics. F statistics is regression sums of squares divided by the error sums of squares. So F value you get 0.5. Because it's not a very meaningful regression, but the ANOVA table has been constructed and now we will we'll compare it with the actual 1482 1482.79, then 58768, total table, total then these values are 307.05, and the other value is 3917.87. The F value is 0.94, and the entire thing has been calculated. And we will we'll also, for completeness, we'll also calculate the total sums of squares. So for that, I have to create one more column. Okay, I'll call it DSS. Now total sums of squares is calculated as an open up bracket y minus y bar, that is the average average of this. I need to fix it because I don't want that shifting when I drag it down.
fixing it and I close the bracket and I square it it's a mistake I made I should close the bracket and then raise it to power of 2 and I get the total sums of square which I apply to everyone Sums equal to sum. Total sums is squares, which I the calculation mistake, but seventy three thousand five eighty eight point nine. Where the total sums of squares, <coughs> and then the enormous table has been complete and now we have completely estimated the regression and we have also estimated this we have estimated right now to get the in the result we need the standard error of the coefficients now what the standard error of the coefficient says is what is the allowable range of this value what is the range within which this variable can each coefficient can vary and for that we should get the the variance of b so in order to get the what this this expression this matrix contains variance of b multiplied by the mean square error the, the, all this exercise of preparing the ANOVA was to arrive at this mean square error this is very important for us this is very important for us because it tells us that this value has to be derived now to find out now the variance of b now i do not want I want to can now calculate the variance of B. So I'll take this whole thing. I'll copy it. Since there's a formula, since there's a formula, I will pay special it. Pay special and I will say values. And I'll say okay. So same thing, same values. Persist. Now I want only variance of b. So in order to get the variance of b, I should divide throughout by sigma e. I should divide this matrix by sigma e. Now how do I do that? I take the sigma e yeah. So what I do is I take sigma e, I'll copy sigma e, control c and then divide it by all the elements of this matrix by first selecting sigma e, then selecting the matrix which I want to be manipulated, and then I go to paste special, and then I divide. Then you find that, oops, oops get my error. So they do, I do the control C. Yeah, that is because this has got a formula. This is, you can see that this has got a formula. Okay, so the formula is the problem. So instead of this, I will take this. It's the same value. So what I'll do is I'll select this because this does not have a formula. You can check here. There is no formula. I'll control C. Right? And then I will select this range. And then I will go to paste, paste special, So why I am doing it is I am dividing it by sigma e so that I get rid of this sigma e and what I am left is, is just its variance of b. Now the variance of b, the diagonal elements will give me the, the diagonal elements will give me the standard error. Now this is beta. Now I want the sc of beta. Or in other words, sc of the estimates. So I am not too worried about this. So what I do is I will take the sqrt. I'll take the square root of only the diagonal elements, of only the diagonal elements. I get 3.6. Okay. Then, I, then I'll check it with So how do I get it? I will say square root of 
square root of the variance of b. Check it once. So it takes a bit. I copy this. Pay special values. And I say OK. Then I'll take the mean square error. And I should want I'll come to that. I'll come to that. I make this a small correction over here. There's a small correction. This should be 1 by sigma squared into e e raised by the x inverse. So it's not sigma, it is 1 by sigma. So which means to factor it, I have to multiply. I have multiplied. I'll get the second standard error e equal to sqrt. I'll open a bracket and take the second diagonal. And I get it. I'll take equal to SQRT and I'll take the third diagonal and I'll take the last one is equal to SQRT and I'll take the last diagonal. I've got the standard error values which are the same as the standard error values here 6.98, 8.71, 0.79. So I've got the standard error. From the standard error I can calculate the T values and then decide whether the coefficients are significant or not. So even for the first one, I can do it. So equal to SQRT. So I stand corrected. Two not three. Okay. Now the standard error, the T values are calculated as the coefficient B by standard error of B. Okay, now we've got 0.78. So this is not a very meaningful regression. So you got the values very similar to that, 0.53, uh, 1.23, 0 0.43. So you got the standard error values also. Now you got the standard error. Now you know where, which coefficients are significant and which coefficients are not. Now one thing that we've left out over here is the R squared, which tells us what is the goodness of it. It's also the goodness of its statistics called the R squared. And the R squared is calculated rather easily by taking from the ANOVA, you take regression sums of squares divided by the total sums of squares. So you get a value of 0.2. So the R squared is 0.2. So you would have seen that there is an R squared of 0.2 here also. And now the exercise is complete. You've got the regression by the method of ordinary least squares. You've got the coefficients. And how you interpret this coefficient is if there is a one unit increase in the first variable x1 over its mean value, the dependent variable y will decrease by 0 0.076 odd units. For a one unit increase in x2 over its mean value, the dependent variable y will decrease by, will decrease by 0 0.982. If there is a one unit increase in x3 over its mean value, keeping other things constant, the dependent variable will decrease by 0 0.38. And finally, if there is a one unit increase in x4 over its mean value, keeping other variables constant, y will increase by 0 0.6. The model has a goodness of its statistics of 0.2. Thank you. And that ends this session on regression.